Welcome back. Today we're going to get into color and start by painting the farthest away part of a landscape, which is the sky. We do the sky first because the mountains overlap the sky and every other element will overlap that. Let's get started by setting up the palette. I'm using the same Stay Wet palette for acrylic paints. I begin by placing all my root colors around the edges. The root colors are the paints right out of the tube. Then I use the middle of this for my mixing area. So let's take a look at how to mix your blue for the sky. I'm gonna get started by creating a smaller amount of the sky color. Always begin with the lightest color, in this case white, because the other pigments are much stronger. Then I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue, but notice I'm placing it to the side, not mixing it all together. And I'm gonna selectively mix the two colors to figure out the ratio that I need. Now, depending on the type of blue paint you have, the pigment can react very differently when you tint the paint. Remember, a tint is simply adding white. So I would suggest if you have more than one kind of blue paint, do a blend test on a scrap of paper or someplace in your sketchbook. See how the blues react with white and experiment with what blue and what combination of blues will work best for you. So to mix, I use my paintbrush in a pooling motion and flip it periodically to blend. This gives me a nice level of control Notice I'm also mixing in a small area. I'm not blending all of my paints together in one big pile. Check your brush and see how the color compares to your reference image. The problem with this type of mix with just blue and white is often the pigments are way too strong. You need to tone down the saturation. One way to do this is adding just a little bit of black. This will go more in a grayscale direction, of course. So dip the tip of your brush in the paint and start mixing. Notice I'm creating a new mix area so I can see how it compares to my other mixed colors. The other color you could use is the complement of blue, which is the opposite. In this case, that's orange. Now, if you don't have orange in your set, you could blend and create a color that's pretty close. I am wiping off my brush periodically just to keep it relatively clean, but you don't have to wash it out since I'm using the same colors to mix anyway. So, Basically, as you mix, you're pooling and blending different colors in different areas, playing with things like the value, how light or dark the color is, and saturation, how colorful that color is, or how neutral that color is. Always check your brush to your reference image and see how it's looking. Now I have a few different kinds of sky blue to start experimenting with on my canvas. So here I'm testing my sky colors right on the canvas. I often paint right along the horizon line first to establish that line and then use up the paint in the sky area. I'm really just testing right now because I don't have much paint. Notice without much paint, you can really see that canvas texture. Now before we just thin this with water to fill that in, but the problem here is we actually want a completed painting now. See how the water actually seeps into the texture of the canvas. So this is not a good strategy for now. What you need is more paint. Mixing larger batches is really where the palette knife comes in handy. See how you can scrape the paint cleanly and then you can blend periodically. You can pull in any of the other colors you need. Now that you've tested the paint, you kind of have a recipe of how to create the color you're after. So you can continue to refine your process, but you need to make more paint. You need enough of your sky blue to paint the entire sky area in one go. Just make sure you thoroughly clean your palette knife after each use. So now that we've got more paint, we're gonna use more of it on our canvas. I want you to paint in a way that you're actually applying a thick layer of paint. You should even see the texture of the paint while you're painting. Take a look at the brush marks you leave behind. This is important because this wet paint gives you something to blend and mix into while you work. So you're gonna go ahead and get that entire sky filled in with a nice layer of wet paint. After that, we're going to use our straight blue right out of the tube, or you can create your own dark blue, and we're going to blend this into the top edge to create a gradient. Typically, you're going to see a little bit darker color further away from the horizon, though it might be the other way around depending on time of day. So you blend this right into that wet paint and create that smooth gradient. Some people call that an ombre. Next, I'm using white paint to do the same thing down at the horizon. I'm going to apply that white directly to my paint in the bottom near the horizon line. I'm gonna refine my edge and blend right in. If you accidentally go past the edge of the horizon, it's not a big deal because we'll paint right over that a little bit later when we do those mountains. 
Use broad strokes with a large brush to work on blending that in until it looks like an even gradient. If you're painting a cloudless sky, you'd spend a little bit more time at this step getting the colors and the value just right and blending it really, really well. For this demonstration though, we're gonna add some clouds. Always remember to wipe off the excess paint on your brush and wash it if you're not gonna be using it for a while. So as I'm refining this, I'm noticing sometimes maybe my saturation is too high, so it's actually okay to mix right on the canvas. You don't always have to make the colors first in your palette. So here I'm grabbing black paint, which might seem a little bit scary, but I know that it's gonna blend into the paint that I already have. So I apply it directly and then I blend it in. Remember this only works if you're painting wet paint on wet paint with a wet edge. If you don't have a wet edge, this will not work. Now some acrylic artists will use the dry brush blending technique. These are some makeup brushes I happen to have and they're very soft dry bristles. So if you have slightly wet paint on your canvas, you can very lightly brush back and forth right over that to blend that in a little bit more. You have to have the right quality brush and the paint has to be the right level of dryness. As always, wash your brush thoroughly and let it dry between uses. Now for painting clouds, use your same mixing area with your sky color you're gonna need the sky color to blend into. So create some shades of gray right there and notice how the existing paint will blend right in so the white isn't too pure and the gray isn't too unsaturated. So create a few values of cloud color here. Take a look at your reference photos to sort of see what to match. Consider blending in other colors if needed. If you're doing like a sunset or sunrise, you're gonna have a lot more color here. So you'll have to try your best to match to that. To get started painting these clouds, I'm gonna get pure white paint, and I'm painting on top of relatively wet sky color. I always have more sky color if needed. Now, the more you mix the paint, the more it's going to dissipate in color. So if you want pure white, you wanna lay down those brush marks and then kind of leave them alone. Painting clouds is a back and forth between applying the paint and blending the paint. Go right into the mountains, because later when we paint those, that'll create an overlapping effect. We always start by painting the clouds closest to the horizon line because they're the farthest away. As we move up away from the horizon line, the clouds generally are gonna become bigger, they're gonna overlap those farther clouds, and they're gonna move closer to the viewer as we move to the top of the composition. So you're gonna continue blending that white into your sky color to create these light, pale clouds. Use your reference and look at the clouds closely. You can either choose to paint exactly what your reference has, or if your sky has a lot of clouds, you can just capture the impression of the clouds and sort of create your own cloud shapes following the rules that you see in your reference image. Next up, I'm gonna grab some black paint or some dark gray, and I'm gonna shade in those darker areas of gray on the clouds. Depending on the cloud type, you might only see a little bit of this, or you might see more. Think of the cloud as a three-dimensional shape floating in the sky. So that means there's gonna be highlights and shadows. The white fluffy parts of the cloud are the highlights and the gray areas can be considered like the shadows. Notice too how some clouds are smoother and rounder on the bottom and fluffier on top. Just use your photo reference and look at the type of clouds that you have. Keep going until you achieve the look that you're after with the amount of clouds that match the look in your reference. Feel free to improvise a little bit. Clouds are constantly changing and this is really capturing the feel of the weather in the sky that day. Feel free to use other reference photos you might have or look something up to give you some ideas, but don't change the weather too much from your original photo or the landscape lighting won't match what's in the sky. If you mess up, just let the paint dry. Any dry paint can be completely painted over. That's one advantage of acrylic paint. Now, as I finish up, I'm adding in some sky blue color and some little white highlights, and then blending it out with a soft, slightly damp brush just to soften any rough edges. Make sure you stand up from time to time and look at this from a distance. This is gonna allow you to see this a little bit more accurately and really help you evaluate when you're actually done. When you are finished, as always, don't forget to wash your brushes thoroughly with soap every single time. Now we're gonna let this paint completely dry and we're gonna come back and paint those distant mountains in our next lesson.